Hello, I'm Taryn Kennedy. I'm the Vice President for Quality for the System. I've been working with the COVID-19 Clinical Advisory Group for the System since last year. And today I'm here with Michael Fassenmeyer, who's one of our OBGYN colleagues. Michael is the chair for the perinatal clinical advisory team who covers all of the labor and delivery for our system. We're here to discuss a couple of issues that have come up now that we have a vaccine available for COVID-19. There's a number of questions that people have concerning whether or not they should avail of, its, of this vaccine. So first of all, Michael, I'd like to talk a little bit about women of childbearing age and some of the concerns that they may have voiced about whether or not they should avail of the opportunity to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Sure, thanks, Taryn. Um, I would say that women of childbearing age uh, should not have any different worries than women of, of any age or anyone who's concern, uh, considering getting the vaccine. Um, there are no special circumstances for uh, women who are either attempting pregnancy or um, there's no recommendations to defer childbearing um, in order to get the vaccine. So, um, you know, there's not a lot of data. There is one study in the Moderna trial that looked at mice and there was no uh, change in fertility after having gotten the, uh, the vaccine. Now, what about somebody who is pregnant and is considering whether or not they should get the vaccine? So as we sit here today, there is no data out there to show that either the Moderna Moderna or the Pfizer vaccine is safe in pregnancy. Unfortunately, they both received emergency authorization without including pregnant patients uh, in their trials. That being said, the two viruses or the two vaccines are not viruses. They are uh, pieces of mRNA that get into the cells. And I, I want to make a clarification. They get into the cells not into the nucleus, so they're not changing the DNA of the cells, but they cause your body to then make a protein uh, that looks like the COVID virus. Your body then stimulates an immune response so that when you come into contact with uh, COVID, that immune response um, starts and, and you're uh, immune, to the, immune to the virus. Now, when you do have that, um, immune response, especially after getting the vaccine, that does stimulate. And, you know, you can look at both the viruses in there. Uh, they discuss the side effects and whether it's fever or, or, you know, kind of feeling. It's not the flu. It's not the virus infecting you. It's your immune and how you respond to that. ACOG does recommend uh, vaccines in pregnancy. We recommend um, the flu vaccine. They recommend the Tdap vaccine. Uh, during pregnancy, both of those vaccines are uh, dead viruses. They are not the mRNA, which is what the Pfizer and Moderna are. Um, and ACOG does not recommend some vaccines if they are a live virus. So for instance, the rubella virus is a live virus and we don't recommend that. So, you know, the short answer that ACOG is giving currently uh, is that it's a personal decision between your provider and the patient. Um, and I understand that we don't have a whole lot of data, but ACOG has kind of moved forward to also say, you know, look at, so there's a couple questions to ask. One of those questions is, what is your risk being a patient of getting severe disease? And the CDC has come out and said that, yes, women who are pregnant and get the COVID-19 virus are at increased risk of severe disease than women who are not pregnant. And that involves ICU admissions, that involves mechanical ventilation and or death. No, those absolute risks are not very high, but taking a woman who is pregnant, a woman who is not pregnant, um, and they both get the COVID-19 uh, virus, um, the women who is pregnant are at an increased risk of severe disease. Those risks do go up if you have any of the comorbidities that can increase that risk, meaning diabetes, obesity, COPD, or heart disease. So I think that's one question that you look at. The second one is what is your risk of getting the virus. 
Um, are you out in the community? Are you a healthcare worker that you have, you know, possible contact with COVID-19 on a daily basis? Do you work from home? Is, are you at a business that has said, we're gonna work from home for the next year or two, that you, you aren't at an increased risk of, of having, um, having contact with the virus on a daily basis? So I think taking you know, some of those things and, and making those decisions with your healthcare provider can certainly help about whether you should receive the vaccine or not. Now, another group who might have some questions are those who've given birth and may be breastfeeding right now. What are the recommendations for them regarding getting the vaccine? So again, as before, you know, there's no, there has not been any studies on, um, on women lactating or breastfeeding. So we kind of go with what, you know, what, what we think or what is out there. Um, and in general, there, the thought is that, that getting the, um, vaccine in, in lactation or breastfeeding is, is okay. But again, there's not been any studies that have said, you know, we gave this virus or the, the, these women have had the virus uh, or the vaccine um, and, and been fine. Now, if people were interested in trying to educate themselves with some more information, obviously that ACOG site would be good. Any other sites that people generally should look to to get good information sure, I'm, before know, they make if, a decision? If, Sure, if they've been researching any of the, the, um, the COVID-19 since it's been out now a year, um, the CDC is always very helpful. Um, and they do try to place them in uh, to have pregnancy as um, um, an area that you can search under in that individual website. But I would say that the CDC and the ACOG would be definitely two places to start. Great, thank you very much. That's been very helpful. Sure.